Welcome to Neguagon State Park. Neguagon State Park is in the northeast side of the Lower Peninsula, south of Alpena is probably the closest city. And in fact, it was originally called Alpena State Park. And then in the 70s, uh, someone convinced the state to rename it to Neguagon State Park in honor of Chief Neguagon of the Ojibwa tribe. It's really appropriate that it is named for him because this is a rural, rustic, undeveloped state park. And I think that's a good tribute to the Native Americans who used to live in this area and utilize um, the gorgeous nature and what they have here for their everyday living. It's about 4,000 acres, I think you said, right? Uh, and it's beautiful in here. I mean, we're here in October, so the leaves are turning. It's fall colors are everywhere. It's really, really pretty. Uh, it's essentially a day use park. And then there are four backcountry campsites. There's a good sized parking lot. And then there are 12 miles of trails that can either be used for hiking or in the winter cross country skiing. A good note is that it's down a seasonal road to get here. And that road is not plowed and taken care of in the winter. So if you do want to go cross country skiing, you'll have to just make sure that either your vehicle or the conditions are right to get you back in here. If you want to spend the night here, you only have one option, and that is to hike all of your gear into one of the four backcountry sites. Actually, you could also paddle your way into those backcountry sites uh, right along Lake Huron, and there are signs right out by the water that tell you that you have arrived at one of those four sites. Yeah, I think the closest one is, is about a mile from the parking lot, and then they go from there, and the furthest one out, the fourth one's about three miles. Uh, if you hike it in, or if you want to paddle in on your canoe and come up from the beach. It's worth it, I think, if you like that kind of camping and you're into tenting. It's a really nice hike back into here. These are really nice sites, and I think they could be a really fun way to do it. I, I mean, I would even consider doing the, the kayaking across <laughs> along the shore. It would be really neat, and then you, and then you bring your stuff in from the boat and, and enjoy the peace and quiet that's out here. Um, I will note, you said that it's a seasonal road and be careful in the wintertime. The DNR noted that it's also kind of a sandy road and there are times when it can be a problem and you should probably have four wheel drive. If it's in those conditions, it's hard to say. We came down here with no problem with the road trek. We have four wheel drive. I never needed to engage it. A couple of bumpy spots where I slowed down so we wouldn't rock the van. But other than that, it's in really good shape right now at least. And I noticed that there are cars of all makes and models out here. So everything from a little sedan to a big truck, an avalanche, the R road truck, a couple of minivans. So yeah, on a good time, pretty much anybody can get out here. I would imagine there's probably certain times of the year, depending on the season, it might be a little rougher to get out here. But, you know, just watch for conditions. It, it really wasn't that bad. It's about a three mile drive between the seasonal road and then through the main state park dirt road to get in. Right off the parking lot is a trail that leads right out to the beach to Lake Huron. And it's a good sized sandy beach. In fact, the whole park extends for, I don't wanna say a couple few miles along Lake Huron. So you've got a wide sandy beach uh, pretty much along the whole way, depending on the water levels. Now, there's no designated swimming area, but you know, to your own risk, bring your stuff. And on a hot day, it might be nice to get out there. Not real rocky. I noticed there's a lot of sand here, not the rocks that a lot of times we're seeing on Lake Huron. Uh, there's a few out in the water, but, but not yet, not as much as we've seen in other places. Each of the campsites, if you do hike in, are right near the water. You might be able to hear the waves as they're crashing in, but so it's a really nice. We're standing here. I think this is number two that we're standing in, and I've got a view of the water and you can hear the waves crashing, and this would be a really neat place to kind of settle in for the night. As far as amenities at the backcountry sites, you've got a picnic table and a fire ring. Uh, with a grate on it for cooking. They usually have left some firewood. There is a porta potty ish setup so that you don't have to dig your own hole. They've already got it set up for you. And we did notice a bear pole, at least in the site that we're at here too. So just keep that in mind, depending on if you are coming out here, that's what you've got to work with. And it's back country, so be prepared for that. Bring everything you're gonna need. Um, be prepared for wildlife. You know, you never know what you're gonna have happening out here, but that's kind of the point of coming out to a backcountry <laughs> site. So I, people that really enjoy doing that, I can understand why they enjoy doing it so much. The DNR does make mention that it is open to hunting, uh, depending on the season and certain times of year. Well, we did see some hunters out here. They said it was good for deer and turkey and grouse and rabbit and I don't know, a bunch of other animals that you can hunt at different times of the year. So just be mindful of that. And if you're out, wear your clothes that are bright colored or just be aware of your surroundings and when you're out here. But it's a multi-use park in that way. So you're gonna have hikers and cross country skiers and hunters and campers out here all at the same time. I think it's a really nice undeveloped 
property that they have here and they've, they've put some amenities in in terms of having the backcountry campsites uh, and just having nice access to the beach from the parking lot that kind of thing but it's definitely worth a trip out here whether it's for the day or if you want to come out here and hike out and do some camping I, I really like this one it's got a really nice feel to it well, I would probably recommend this park at any time of the year. The fall is especially gorgeous when you've got all the trees changing color. And so you've got the ones that are still green, but the yellows, the oranges, and the bright reds sort of all commingled. And it just makes for a really scenic and beautiful sight. So consider coming out in the fall to check out the leaves or come any time of year and enjoy this really beautiful, peaceful piece of property that the state has and is here for you to use. Keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. I would recommend it probably any time of the year, but here in the fall in October, it's just gorgeous with the colors. You've got the reds and the greens and, and the blue, sorry, reds and greens and blue, yes. All there the no colors. There are no blue leaves. Sorry, it was blue sky when I looked up. There's something wrong with that tree. <laughs> Let me try that again.